buying a site can sound scary if you've never done it before. There's a lot of things that can go wrong if you don't do something right during the transfer process. I've experienced transferring websites both from the buying and the selling side of things, so I have quite a bit of experience in this area. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing more on the selling side of transferring a website. However, it's pretty much the same both if you're a buyer or a seller, so really anybody can benefit from watching this video. Anyways, let's get started. Drifting in my heart, I know a fool. Lying ain't my only golden rule. I bought a website on Flippa about a year ago for $1,038.98. Since then, I've spent about $72.85 in content. So all in, I'm in at about $1,111.83. Since I've owned that site, it's generated me $154 in passive income. I ended up selling the site at $1,600. After all the flip of fees and everything, I took home $1,390. That means in total, this website has earned me $432.29 in one year off of a $1.1,000 investment. So in total, that's about a 38% return on my money in only one year, which is really not that bad. That's actually pretty good. So the process of selling a website on Flippa is actually a lot simpler than you might think. The only downside to selling on Flippa rather than selling on a website like Motion Invest is that you have to do the entire transfer process yourself. I bought a website before with Motion Invest and all I had to do was give them my information for my to log into my account and they did everything else for me. Unfortunately with Flippa, you're all on your own. That being said though, the reason why I went with Flippa and not Motion Invest is because I think you can get a lot more money selling your site on Flippa because of the bidding mechanism. So I had about 10 or 12 bidders on my website and because they were fighting over purchasing that website, I really think it drove up the price up to $1,600 when the website itself was only making like $20. It really shouldn't have sold for over $1,000. The competition, supply and demand, is why I got such a higher multiple. I think total that would be like a 60 times monthly multiple or something something crazy like that. So I got a really good price. And if I had sold it on Motion Invest, I probably would have only got like $800 to $1,000. So to sell a site on Flippo, the first thing you have to do is just set it up on the website. And that's really the easy part. All you got to do is click on the button there where it says to sell a website. And Flippo will pretty much guide you through the whole process. Just fill out the information that they ask of you and just follow the process. It's pretty simple. Hopefully you've been keeping good track of your website's income as well as expenses because you're going to need to provide that information as well as a video of your proof of income. And for that, I just took a bunch of screenshots from my Amazon and my AdSense and my Ezoic back to about a year ago. I got a bunch of screenshots, made a short little video of me just scrolling through all the screenshots and I uploaded that on Flippo just to prove that I actually made the money that I said that I made. You also need to upload your analytics information, but that's super easy. You just connect your analytics and all your information will automatically upload. After that, you'll fill in any other information that Flippa is asking from you and you should be good to go. The cost of doing this is $50 to list the website, whether it sells or not, it's $50. And when it does sell, then you owe 10% of whatever it sells for. So when your site is listed, if people want to bid on it, you'll get a notification in your email where you have to go and manually accept new bidders, which is actually a good feature to have because there's a lot of sketchy profiles that you might not want to have bidding on your website. There's a setting where you can actually turn that off if you just want to automatically accept everybody, but it's not really recommended to do that. Normally what I did was message each person individually when they wanted to become a bidder and just to make sure that they were serious and everything before allowing them to bid. The bidding will go on for 30 days. After that, if your website doesn't happen to sell or doesn't meet your reserve price, then your listing will turn into a normal listing rather than a bid listing. So once the site sells, the fun part begins. Immediately after the sale, you'll need to set up your escrow account and you'll wanna make sure that the buyer sends the funds to escrow and the funds are secured before you do anything else. So once the funds are secure, you should get an email and here's what you need to do next. You want to send the domain to the buyer, so you'll need their registrar information. You'll probably need an authorization code from them or each registrar is a little bit different, but it's pretty simple. Just find the transfer section in your registrar and it'll tell you everything you need. You'll probably need their email, but if you're sending your domain to the same registrar, like a Namecheap to another Namecheap, then all you need is their account information. But if you're sending it to different registrars, then you'll just need their email and you'll send it to them that way. 
and then they'll just have to go through the process. So the next thing you want to do is get a backup file of your entire website. So for that, I used the plugin backup slash restore. Then I sent that file to my Google Drive and I shared it with the buyer. The files will need to be uploaded to the buyer's hosting account and they'll need to create a website to host those files on and they'll need to point the domain to that website. To make sure everything goes smoothly, you'll want to make sure the name servers are pointed to their hosting account and you'll want to wait at least 24 to 48 hours because that's how long it normally takes to propagate. And you want to do all that before transferring everything just to make sure everything goes smoothly and you don't have any problems. And then after that, you can go ahead and give the buyer the analytics information, give them full admin access, and just give them anything else that they might need that comes with the website. The buyer will need to contact Ezoic if they want to set that up, if that's part of the deal. They'll also need to apply to AdSense and they'll have to add their own Amazon affiliate or whatever affiliate programs onto the website. They'll need to get their own code and swap those out for their own. So more help with Ezoic, here's an email that they sent me when I told them that I was selling my website. They said in order to remove the site, integration will need to be removed just to keep in mind. There may be some time where ads will not be displayed on the site throughout the transition. Once the site is removed, the new owner will sign this up and will have to undergo the review and setup process. Though, since the site has already been approved, it shouldn't be any issues. Then here's another email from Exoic that just explains what the buyer needs to do. So first, they need to upload a .txt file on their site with the exact phrase. So here's the phrase. I'm sure it's going to be different for each. Each case is going to be diff a different code. Let them know where the URL is located and they can uh, move forward with the process. The other thing that you have to do is remove the integration from Ezoic. So you want to point the name servers away from Ezoic and towards the hosting account instead. The new owner will then need to open a separate ticket and they can do this via their knowledge base at support.ezoic.com. Then they can help them add the domain to their account and transfer the placeholders across the domain in that account. There's going to be a period where ads aren't showing on the site while the new publishers reintegrates. It can take up to 24 hours. So once the buyer has received everything and they're happy, they can go ahead and confirm it on their escrow account and then the transaction will be complete and you should receive your money in about three to four days. Selling a site on Flippa is actually pretty simple when you think about it and once you get good at it you can flip websites and you can make some pretty decent returns on your money. But a big thing to remember is your profit is really made on the purchase. When I bought Dry Food Craze about a year ago it wasn't really making any money at all. Actually I don't think they had it monetized even with AdSense or Amazon so I probably could have tucked them down to like $500 for the website instead of the thousand dollars that I paid and I would have made even more profit. But that was my first time buying a website and I was just excited to get started. But in the end even if I did lose money on that purchase I think it was still worth it just for the learning experience. I think anyone interested in this business should start buying websites because eventually the transfer process is just something that you're going to have to do and it's better to screw up a small website that's only making that only costs like a thousand dollars rather than when you go to sell another site that's maybe a five or six figure website and you completely screw it up because you don't know what you're doing that's going to be a lot worse than to just try it now with a cheaper website and failing and just figuring out the whole process and what you need to do. Hopefully this video answered all your questions with buying and selling websites with Flippa. If you have any other questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer all of them on this video. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and turn on the bell notification so you'll be notified for any future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.